Member of Parliament for Busa South, Dr. Clement Park has challenged the report of the seven-member committee tasked by the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources to investigate alleged corruption and involvement of some government officials in the illegal Rosswood export. The 77-page report, among other things, states that it is unable to establish any corruption against any government official. But this, the Busa South legislator describes as a big cover-up, uh, the report further indicate that video footage and other materials provided by the Washington, D.C.-based Environmental Intelligence Agency, EIA, did not have sufficient evidence to back its corruption claims. The EIA alleged that Ghana exported some uh, 5.4 million U.S. dollars worth of rosewood species to China in September of 2019, illegally at a time government a government's ban was was in place but the committee insisted that uh, that was factually inaccurate as Ghana's rosewood stock was far less than what was being published by the EIA. Right, so we're fortunate to have in our studios uh, this afternoon Dr. Clement Park uh, to uh, join us uh, with uh, a review of all these issues. Doc, uh, good afternoon and thank you extremely for joining us. So what's your quick reaction to the response from government, especially to suggest that Ghana's Rosso stock is far less than the EIA has published? Well, first of all, let me say good afternoon. You describe it as a shot. Right? Let, me, let me say good afternoon mm -hmm. to you and uh, to viewers. I know Bulsa South uh, people are always watching uh, TV3. Um, I have uh, many issues uh, to do with uh, the report that uh, was outdoored by the Minister for Rules, I mean, Lands and Natural mm -hmm. Resources. Um, I, th I think it was on, on Friday. Um, I know that the EIA is going to formally respond to the content of the report. Mm -hmm. And I would also be doing similarly because I've had a chance to go through and uh, I disagree with uh, a lot of issues. What, that exactly, came up. what exactly do you disagree uh, in, in the report? First of, all, first, of all, hmm. first of all, if you look at uh, the factors that triggered the formation of this committee, uh, it was largely on the back of the EIA report, which was also accompanied by a documentary, which was aired internationally. So government then felt compelled to respond because mm. the position of government was that uh, this report was uh, going to dent the image, if you like, of uh, the nation and government in as far as the effort to protect our savanna ecological uh, forest zone was concerned. Mm. Uh, but if you look at the methodology, you know, which you and I would agree would be the, the guiding yeah. principle, or if you like, the roadmap for conducting the, the, the investigation, and the investigation itself, and I must say, uh, was on the basis that the EIA had claimed that uh, powerful Chinese and Ghanaian traffickers were still harvesting and shipping rosewood out of the country. And that the, these groups, the criminal gangs, mm. had the help of ruling party members and the complicity at all levels of government. And this the government says there are no, no this, facts this, to yes. that. Go government said that they, 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 they didn't accept this mm. uh, charge and they were going to conduct an investigation mm. now ideally if you are to conduct an investigation into such allegations mm. you would expect that that would have involved a face-to-face -face interaction uh, with the principal accuser mm. in this case the eia mm. and even before the eia made this report public we know that several media houses including joy fm had done a documentary also implying same so why you don't engage the principals and those that I believe have the information mm. to help you get to the bottom of those government officials who are complicit. And yet you come out to say that you don't so have you, adequate... you think there is a grand scheme that, that, for yeah, that is, that covering is, up that is those my, implicated? That, that is my conclusion. And even my own concern dates even before the outcome of the committee report. If you look at the membership of the committee, the committee is largely composed of persons drawn from the institutions that the EIA and others have said are complicit. So you have representatives from uh, the Forestry Commission, representatives from the Ministry, uh, you know, the ranking member, I mean the chairman of uh, the Lands and uh, 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 re, uh, the Lands Committee. Which makes you question of, of how objective they will exactly. be. Exactly. So when you have a committee right? composed of seven people and only two 
are from independent entities. You surely cannot expect. Even the deputy minister and the minister, they are all government appointees. Mm. I mean, the forestry commissioner, I said government appointee. So you don't expect them to conduct an investigation that will indict them. Mm. So from the onset, it was very clear to me and many others that this committee was set up to cover up. And I still believe that to be the same. And so I what, truly what would have been your the, your expectation of an ideal committee? I mean, seeing that you're raising questions on the membership of the committee which uh, which conducted investigations into this. Well, from the very onset, I had advice that if government truly wanted to get to the bottom of this, everybody there should be independent. Yes, they should take persons to compose the committee who are not from the same institutions that are complicit mm. in as far as the reports are concerned and what ordinary Ghanaians who have followed this narrative are aware of. So obviously you couldn't have expected the minister not to be glad that his committee, his own committee, has not found adequate. And the word adequate, adequate means that some has been found, but not enough. So even in the, not the sufficient report itself, for an indictment. the, the, the mm. minister says and the report says that not adequate has been found. But then it goes on to say in the same report mm. as one of the findings that the committee has uncovered corruption right. along the chain, the value chain of the species. So how do you reconcile the two? Mm. So Do my Dr. Dr. Parker, we have to quickly uh, hold you on and get onto the telephone lines. We're joined by Benito Wusubio, who is a Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources. Joining us now, uh, good afternoon. So the Dr. Clement Park is of the view that this report, which uh, more like exonerates everyone in the value chain of the Rosewood Challenge, is a cover-up. Uh, your quick response. Uh, uh, good afternoon to your listeners and uh, your watchers. Uh, if he says that, I would say uh, that I'm very, very surprised, and uh, I would say that is not a fair comment. Yes, uh, that's an unfair comment because. So, 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 why do you say? Why do you say unfair? Uh, uh, after reading the entire report, you can just decide that uh, uh, the report <laughs> does not show the real picture. What we are saying is that going forward, there is a need. Uh, for some selected uh, institutions to also be uh, to also be investigated. For instance, uh, we cited uh, that of uh, the uh, the straightforwarders, those who have been engaged in uh, exporting uh, the wood to Asia, uh, because it is important that they are investigated so that we find we come to the bottom of this whole issue of forged documentation because uh, we had support from Vietnam. Uh, the Vietnamese officials, uh, after we had uh, communicated to them, sent us copies of some of the cited documentation which have reached their end after the ban. And interestingly, what we, find, what we found out was that those ones were all forged documentation. Because uh, since they couldn't get genuine cited documentation locally in Ghana, what they have been doing is to be forging the documentation and then uh, exporting uh, same to uh, Vietnam and Asia. And it's important that uh, those people are investigated right. so that uh, the law deals with them. Aside that, to what we are also saying is that uh, the, our cited uh, office in uh, the Forestry Commission should also undergo through a forensic audit. But, 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 but Honorable, you, you're not, you're not responding to, you're not, you're not responding to the initial basis. So that is not the end of the story, please. Mm. But, but, but you're not responding to the initial basis of the fact that the reason uh, Dr. Park and other people uh, raise concerns about the fairness in this investigation is the fact that uh, only two of the members on this committee were independent and that everybody else came from the same institutions which were indicted. I, I would say that uh, I would be surprised because uh, apart from myself as the chairman, and then the secretary to the committee. I don't see who else comes from the same institutions that he's, uh, he's talking about. For instance, we had a former deputy minister uh, for this ministry, that is the Lance Ministry, uh, in the person of the Honorable Ajay Yeboah. 
And he was a deputy minister during Kofu's era. He's no more a deputy minister in this ministry. Aside that, we had a member also from the GRE. He was nominated by the head of the GRE. It's important that we had somebody from the GRE because we are also part of the chain. And also for us to be able to delve into the issues very well. Aside that, too, we had a representation from the CSO. The CSO also uh, gave us one person. And then also a research fellow from uh, the CSIR, and that is Forage, was also a member. So I'm surprised. Why is he saying that? We also had the chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on uh, Lands and Forestry also as a member. And we were only seven. So where is he coming from? Right. Uh, uh, we're grateful for your time. Uh, Benito also be your Deputy Minister of Lands and Natural Resources. This is uh, Midday Live and we still have uh, Dr. Clement Park in the studio. Doc, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a chance to uh, react, uh, but well, we'll, take, we'll take a very quick break well, and uh, when we return, we'll continue with that conversation. Right, uh, Dr. Clement Park. Uh, so you heard uh, Benito uh, Bio. Yes, he's my colleague, and, and I disagree with him. I, I, I am not making the assumptions. It, it, these are persons drawn from institutions that mm. the EIA cited as being complicit. Mm. And so when you take the bulk of a seven-member committee from institutions cited to be complicit, government, party, and the commission itself, including the ministry, I mean, obviously, don't say I am saying it. This is what the EIA said. And because of that, many are not surprised about the outcome. Because the minister, his deputy, the, 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 the chairman of, of the, 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 the select committee, and all the persons that he has listed, besides the persons from you know, the private sector and civil society, they are all part of the same group that the EIA has said are complicit, mm. facilitating, enhancing, and even benefiting mm. from this trade. It's as right. simple as that. So my fate still lies with uh, the special prosecutor. Because if you remember, I, on the back of this same EIA report, had filed a petition to the office of the special prosecutor, believing very well that this is exactly what was going to happen, and this is exactly what has happened. Dr. It Kenneth. is easier to blame others and to say that investigations and forensic investigations by the BNI should be conducted into what and what and what but how is it that there is so much silence and inadequate information to hold government officials and others accountable ask yourself that question dr uh, clement park uh, we also have on the telephone lines where pretty shortly uh, we'll be joined by the uh Imano Dogbenvi, who is a managing editor of the ghana business news he has done extensive investigations into this rosswood uh, problem he's joining us on the phone uh, good afternoon sir thank you very much i know that you spent quite a lot of time in the worst hit zones of uh, the rosswood in the northern sector uh, i want you to tell us what your findings were, how extensive your investigations and the outcomes you got. Well, thank you very much, Steve, for having me on, on your show. I have spent um, two weeks in September and, and December 2018 in the Upper West region area, which is quite also devastated by the level and volume of rosewood harvesting. And then in January, I spent another two weeks in the three northern regions. That's the northern region, the northeast region, and the savannah region. Mm. And it is unbelievable that, you know, you would have that level of logging of very special, very precious, expensive, you know, natural resource like rosewood have happening in a democratic state with all the forces and the powers of security to make sure that our environment is protected it was like a war zone as if there are no rules you know and the level of devastation and the, the kind of impact it is likely to have on the arid zone of the savannah mm. in the long term cannot be imagined mm, i know 
I know that the government response to all of this came just after you spent some two weeks doing these investigations. Uh, how do you respond to the, the government's uh, casting down on the allegations of IEA, for example, and raising questions of the actual stock of Rosewood we have? Do you get a sense that government's reaction is actually synonymous with the problem on the ground? I think that our government is not showing enough commitment in protecting our environment. Uh, as a journalist, who, 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 whose obligation as it is, is to, to the public good, I feel quite spited and I feel pain that I take risks. I spend enormous amount of time and money to uncover what is wrong in terms of how our natural resources are managed. And the government comes and gives a statement and it's like a waving off of the hand like, you know, it's not a big deal, you know, and then says, go ahead and, and, and do further forensic investigation. So all along, as journalists, we go out there and do stories and publish them. What has been the government's response? And when you listen to the government's response, it's like the government is only reacting to the EIA report. But several Ghanaian journalists have gone up there and reported consistently, regularly, on a number of times about the devastation of, of the Arizona in, in that part of the country with regards to how much rosewood is being illegally cut out of the place. Right. So, you know, it gives you the impression like that government doesn't either take Ghanaian journalists serious or it doesn't take itself serious. And the devastation is huge, considering the fact that that part of the country is a savanna, it's an arid zone. And, and as I speak to you now, I right. just left the place at the last Imano. week of... Imano, yes. we're, we're grateful for your time. Thank you extremely. That's all time will allow us. Uh, this is still midday live from our studios at Adisa Wikanda and Dr. Park. We're grateful that Very you well. came in.